Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 50th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Um, we started to put our Brotherhood battles onto YouTube um, June of last year, uh, 2013, and it's hard to believe that we've managed to get to 50. Um, it's just a, kind of a bit of a milestone for us. Um, so for our 50th game, I, I wanted to look for something special, something that, uh, you know, maybe when people see a Brotherhood member on Rome Total War, they might remember that 50th battle. And I think I found it here. Um, this game was fought in either February or March of 2005, nine years ago. And um, it's from, uh, it was um, transferred to me by Brotherhood member Kendi. And so is uh, is nine years old, and it's from like if you like the BH archives, the Brotherhood archives. And um, I think um, when you see how um, the battles used to be fought nine years ago, you'll be surprised. Um, all the players in this game are still kind of learning Rome Total War at the time um, because it's uh, obviously still in the um, the early stages of the game. So um, all the players that you'll see in this game went on to be really great RTW players, and kind of um, you know you could say almost Brotherhood. Um, member legends really in time um, but here in this game you'll see some probably some moves that you think whoa you know why are they doing that or um, why haven't they done this but of course because it's nine years ago and Rome Total War had only really just started um, you know they're still learning the game anyway the first team consists of Brotherhood member Kendi who has bought the Rome SBQR faction um, this game, by the way, is I think it's about 60k each and no rules. So that goes to show it's even pre-rules. And here we have um, Brotherhood member Titan, who has bought the Greek cities. And Brotherhood member Greek the Pit. Sorry, Pit to the Greek, um, who has uh, bought the Rome SBQR faction there. Um, so that's uh, that's the first uh, team there, and as you can see, it's all um, Brotherhood members. Um, what I just like to show you here is that because this is a no rules game for about 60k each, there's some artillery there. Um, of course, you don't usually we don't uh, allow artillery in 31k games, so, so to t see artillery is unusual. So um, there you go. As I say, this game is nine years old. It's a no rules game, and I think they're playing for about 60k each. Uh, wait till you see the other Brotherhood team too. And here we have the other team here. Here we have um, Conan, who has bought the uh, Brotherhood member Conan, who has bought the Rome Julio faction. Of course, Conan and another RTW player called Cannon um, started the Brotherhood clan back in January 2005. And uh, really well done for them um, for how strong the Brotherhood is still going today. And then we have a Brotherhood member Rolo, who has bought the Seleucid faction. And then we have Brotherhood member Luther, who has bought the Rome Scipii faction. Now when we looked at the Seleucid faction, you might have spotted some uh, units there we don't usually see in our, uh, in our YouTube games. I'll put the game on pause there so we can have a look at the uh, Seleucid army. So don't forget this is a 60k game with no rules. And here we have the artillery. Uh, the artillery can fire either stone shots, which are quite accurate, or fire pots, which are not accurate but can do a lot of damage. There you have the Seleucid tank cavalry. And here we have a unit uh, that I don't know whether any of you have seen before, and that is the armoured elephants. The Seleucid armoured elephants. If you look at the armour on them, you can see how tough these elephants are. And if you look at the men sat on top, those men are archers. And if you get any, if you get into range with uh, with those elephants, you'll see that the archers are firing arrows at the enemy. If you want the elephants to actually charge in to the uh, enemy formation, you have to use their alternative attack. And then these massive armoured um, elephants then charge into the enemy. I would just like to say we call the Seleucid. Um, cataphract cavalry, the, the tanks of the ancient world, where well, these uh, armoured elephants really are the tanks of the ancient world, and uh, when they charge in they can do a heck of a lot of damage. So as you can see, um, that's the team, uh, that's the team there, and as you can see right from the beginning there's, uh, there's some action going on. Um, over there you can see um, units charging in, you can see some Scipio units charging towards some SBQR cavalry units there. 
Um, but if you notice, there's reinforcement SPQR cavalry coming down to support them. So the, uh, the Scipio cavalry is going to retreat there. This should be a great battle to watch. Remember, it's nine years old. Here you can see that the SPQR general has just been killed by the uh, Seleucid um, heavy cavalry there, the tank cavalry. And here's some um, shots of um, artillery actually in use. If you can see these artillery pieces are actually shooting fire pots. Now these fire pots are not very accurate but they've got the potential if they land in a um, tightly formed infantry unit they can take out half that infantry unit. That's how devastating these fire pots are. Um, but the stone uh, or boulders that they, they fire are more accurate, but they don't do um, that much damage, really. And as you can see, um, I think uh, several of the, um, the, the generals here have bought artillery. And if you see those guys were firing just stone shots there. And if we try and follow uh, where those stone shots um, are going to land. As you can see, the dust on the ground where those stone shots have landed. And the enemy are re replying with stone shots. Uh, towards the, the other team there. As you can see as the stone shots hits the uh, the desert ground you can see the um, the sand being thrown up. What they're trying to do is trying to destroy each other's artillery pieces. If they can actually destroy the artillery pieces then of course then they can then concentrate their own artillery onto the enemy uh, infantry. So that's the tactic there is to try and destroy each other's um, artillery if you can. Um, so that's that's what's going on there. But as I say, the, the fire pots are so inaccurate that when you aim at something, they they very rarely hit what you're aiming at. So, um, but these stone shots are a lot more accurate. Uh, sometimes um, somebody will throw over a light cavalry uh, unit, like maybe a general unit, something to charge into um, an artillery unit to try and kill the men manning it, um, just to stop it from um, from being used. As you can see, as the stone shots come over uh, and see the dust thrown up in the air, you can see that uh, those stone shots um, have got a fair old distance and are quite accurate too. And there's the fire pots coming over. If you saw them hit that unit there, and you can see all the burnt men on the ground there. So uh, artillery is quite devastating in its own way. At this stage of the battle you can see the Brotherhood member Pitt the Greek has actually um, put his infantry into open order there to try and um, stop his units being hurt so much by the um, stone artillery shots coming on them. But as you see now he's put them back to tight um, close order if you like as he sees the uh, the enemy Roman Julii infantry moving towards him. Now you can see some Seleucid cavalry charging in there. What they're trying to do is to try and kill the last of the um, Seleucid um, or the, uh, the the men actually um, who were shooting the artillery pieces there. That's what those Seleucid cavalry were sent in there for to do, to try and kill them. And it looks like they managed to do that. So that's all. I think those are all those artillery pieces now. All the men have been killed, so they will be destroyed. Over on the far left here, you can see that um, there's Kendi's SPQR cavalry uh, coming over uh, to support Pitt the Greek, who's already uh, whose cavalry is already fighting the uh, SP, um, Scipio uh, cavalry there. And some infantry units. As you can see, the uh, Scipio uh, infantry general sending over two infantry units, and there's the impact of, cavalry, of uh, Kenya's cavalry there. If you notice, it's such an early uh, stages of RTW. Kenny didn't have his cavalry in wedge formation there, and just charged in, and if you like, a normal formation. So he didn't have the penetration that a wedge formation would have had when he went in there. But of course, as I say, uh, a lot of the people that you're seeing here that became RTW veterans and really great players are still learning the game because it's so early, um, you know, since it first came out. It is time to press the attack. So as you see, um, some Julii cavalry now have come over to join the fray there and are attacking um, SPQR cavalry. But meanwhile, um, the... Um, the Scipio infantry and cavalry that are here are gradually being routed by so many um, SBQR um, cavalry. 
so I think that um, and then when the SBQ cavalry is finished with that they'll be back over here you can see some Seleucid companion cavalry charging in once again notice that the um, cavalry were not in wedge formation and they just charged in a normal formation that's why it didn't get the penetration um, today um, RCW players would probably have those cavalry in wedge formation and when they charged in they would have penetrated well and maybe even caused units to rout um, but as I say it's, it's um, in the early stages of Rome Total War and, and people are still learning these things. The enemy general is killed. Fear makes so it looks like the SBQR cavalry have won a good victory over there. And what I'd like to draw to your attention here is can you notice that there are no pilot shield units in front of the Roman armies if you notice. Uh, they're just uh, ordinary close formation. As you notice here um, people have not um, put out pilot units in open order in front of their infantry and did you know that um, the first person that did that on Rome Total War was a brotherhood member called Judas and uh, one day he thought about putting a couple of units in open order in front of his main battle line uh, to soak up the enemy pilots without um, uh, you know without doing a lot of damage to those um, pilot units those two pilot units and um, and ever since he's done that, that's what everybody's done. They put out a couple or two or three units in open order in front of their main battle line to protect them from the pilot hits. But as you can see, in these days, uh, in those, these days that you're watching now, those days, um, people just don't put pilot units out in front of their main battle line. And they just kind of pilot each other um, with both of them being in close order, each unit being in close order. So uh, that's something that you might notice um, when you watch the battle. As you can see, the pilots there being thrown straight into um, close order uh, infantry units. There, something that kind of um, would be very rare today to happen. As you know, you'd probably open your unit into you know into open order there to avoid that hit. As you can see, lots of fire arrows hitting um, those um, Julii infantry there. As the Greek cities, uh, Cretan archers are firing fire arrows into the rear of them. So that's going to cause some uh, some routing, I would think. And there's a the Greek cities. Uh, light cavalry hitting into the back there but don't forget um, this is for 60k so all the units are fully upgraded so there's not going to be a lot of routing and here's the elephants charging in to it uh, charging into the Spartans there now if you notice they knock a lot of Spartans over but a lot of Spartans get back up um, and that's what the elephants do they very often knock people over and you think oh my gosh they're, they're knocking out a whole unit but then you'll see that the unit a lot of the units stand back up as you see these elephants are throwing Spartans up into the air as they charge through them here as you can see it's kind of uh, but if you notice none of the elephants are running amok and that's because they're fully upgraded and they won't they won't right they'll just fight to the death now and as you can see they're throwing lots and lots of Spartans up in the air with their attack um, well, there's I think there's a couple of the elephants actually have run amok now so even if they're fully upgraded they still run amok but as you can see um, they just kind of run over a lot of people knock them over and then the people stand back up and there's the last of the elephant um, units have gone down now they've been killed the enemy general flees press forward and here you see some uh, Seleucid pikemen coming towards the Greek cities And meanwhile, the um, the Greek city's Cretan archers are still firing fire arrows onto the um, Seleucid back of the Seleucid pikemen. There. Meanwhile, over over here, you can see that the uh, Rome Julia infantry have surrounded um, several SPQR infantry units there. And as you can see, there's some Greek city's um, units charging in to try and relieve the pressure off of their um, SPQR ally. But as you can see, he's completely surrounded there by uh, Julia infantry. And I would think that. Uh, that pretty soon all those units were rout. As you can see, the, uh, the Scipio infantry here are in fierce uh, fighting with the um, SBQR infantry. And if you notice at the back of the battle, you can see some Seleucid cavalry running around the flanks. My guess is they're probably um, going to hit into the archers there. And yes, there they go, smash straight into the archers. Because uh, the, the amount of fire arrows those archers were firing on, onto the, uh, the enemy team, they were probably causing a lot of uh, morale to be lowered and, routing, and, and the possibility of routing a lot of um, units there as well. Over here on the right you can see that uh, 
the Seleucid pikemen there are fighting uh, fiercely with the, uh, the Spartans. There's a bit of close up of them fighting there. And there you see some Seleucid tank cavalry have just charged into the back of those Spartans. But because those Spartans are fully upgraded, um, they uh, it would take a heck of a lot of them for them to rout. Um, because as you know Spartans uh, morale is so good and with the two hit points and being fully upgraded um, I wouldn't think you're going to see many Spartan units route even with a massive hit from tank cavalry like that and as you see today probably um, you'd probably pulled your cavalry out by now you wouldn't leave the fighting Spartans like that um, you know because the only outcome is going to be is that Sully said cavalry is going to route and run but of course in those days as I said everybody's learn still learning the game so you're going to see little things like that during the battle that uh, you, you know you, you probably wouldn't think about doing today. And you see the Greek cities are pretty well won now against the Celius at this side. So my guess is they'll probably run over to help their allies over here. As you can see now, um, a lot of the um, Julia infantry uh, are under pressure, and I would think we'd start to rout soon. As you can see, some SBQR infantry being rushed in behind um, the Scipio infantry there. And here's some close-up fighting of the uh, the Julio infantry against the Greek cities. If you notice, um, this Greek city unit is not in pike formation. In other words, it hasn't in, got, not in a phalanx position, and it was fighting with its swords. Where you can see this unit is actually in a phalanx position with its pikes fighting, but the other one, um, the pikes were not down, so they were fighting with their swords. But as you can see, um, the Julii um, infantry are starting to rout now. And when the um, Scipio infantry um, kind of see their allies rout, it lowers their morale. And it wouldn't surprise me if the uh, Scipio infantry started to rout soon. And there we go. And so that's, uh, that's the Scipio infantry finally routed there. So um, there you go. That's, uh, that was a battle there from uh, approximately nine years ago. And uh, um, as you can see, there was uh, probably some moves there that, that you spotted that uh, that you wouldn't do these days. But of course, as I said, uh, nine years ago, everybody's still learning the game. And all those players went the on to be really great RTW players in time. They are not soldiers, only frightened. So that was um, a Brotherhood battle from nine years ago. As I say, um, probably one of the, the big things you noticed there was that... Um, People just didn't put open order uh, pilot shield units in front of their main battle lines at the, in that particular battle. And um, a few months after this battle, I think a, a Brotherhood member called Judas was the first member to actually put an open order uh, unit in front of his main battle line to soak up the pilots. Um, that, uh, that battle was really good. I thought everybody played well in it. Um, it was great to see the elephants in action. And I, I hope you enjoyed seeing the, uh, the artillery and the elephants, um, what they can do in battle. And um, I thought it was uh, some great movement and some great tactics on the battle there um, as well. Um, remember that every unit there was fully upgraded. Um, so um, there wasn't a lot of routing going on there. They fought right up to the end. So Spartan Commander saying, hope you enjoyed the battle and bye for now.